Hello, I'm Brownfield Anchor reporter Megan Grebner. Welcome to Voice of Soy TV, a content partnership with the Ohio Soybean Council on Brownfield. Today, we're joined by Tom Fontana, Director of Research and Education with the Ohio Soybean Council, uh, Kyla McCoy, Lead Ambassador with Grow Next Gen, and Jane Hunt, Director of Education for educationprojects.org. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Good morning, Megan. I'm excited to talk about the Grow Next Gen program, the ambassador program, and a little bit about how Ohio Soybean also is involved. Uh, to get us started and to kick things off, Tom, give us some background about Grow Next Gen. What is it and how did it come about? Well, that's great. I love talking about Grow Next Gen, Megan. Um, We've done education work with teachers and students for over 25 years here at the Ohio Soybean Council, but about uh, 10 or 11 years ago, our farmers really wanted to make a difference, and soybean prices were high then, and they wanted to come up with a couple things to uh, big projects to work on. And one of those were, led to the development of Grow Next Gen. Our farmers thought it was very important to have an education program that put teachers and students in touch with agriculture. So uh, two major purposes of Grow Next Gen, one was to make the connection in science classrooms around Ohio and consequently around the country, uh, making that connection uh, agriculture to science, not in agri-science classrooms necessarily, but in chemistry, biology, environmental science, because most students in Ohio, and I'm sure in other states, really don't take agri-science. So it was a way to... Uh, uh, get that information into the classroom. The other thing our board was interested in is how do you get students in middle and high school to think about careers in agriculture? So by teaching them, making those connections in the classroom, they get career information and can find out about all the opportunities in our industry. So that's how it got started. Grow Next Gen's about 10, 11 years old, been very successful, and our farmer board is very proud of the program. We're focusing a lot of our conversation today about uh, the Ambassador Program. Jane, can you talk a little bit about its background? When did it get underway, and uh, what are the goals of it? Well, I believe since the, the Soybean Council started thinking about education, educating the public was also a big piece of that. And so we just had a very small cadre of, of folks who would go to farm days or uh, ag days that maybe counties would hold uh, where fourth and fifth graders would come. And then they'd ask us to make soybean seed necklaces or, um, you know, make soy ink. Um, so about I don't know, I think five or six years ago, uh, we had a little bit of a, a partnership with Battelle and we got a big grant that helped us to recruit a larger cadre of uh, agri-science, mainly agri-science college students uh, who are in the agri-science, you know, doing education or marketing. Uh, and then we really started kind of ramping up our training and we've expanded our activities and we've been really successful at reaching over 20,000 people a year since COVID even. Uh, so that's been really great to get the message out to, to rate, I don't know if I want to say regular, but to get the, the message out to consumers and their families about how important agriculture is to the economy of Ohio, as well as soybeans, and that soybeans play a big role in everyone's life, whether you realize it or not. So that's kind of our focus with our ambassador program is to get that message out. Jane, can you talk to you a little bit about how it works? So uh, a little bit about some of the programs or where folks might see those ambassadors a little bit more uh, to, to be able to engage in that conversation and have those questions answered. Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll definitely have a big presence at the Ohio State Fair. Um, we are uh, engaged in several county fairs as well, and usually on those family days where they'll ask us to come and set up a table and do activities with, with kids. 
Um, but that gives you a great opportunity to talk to the parents about what it is that's going on in Ohio. And um, we also were at the COSI Big Science Festival where we had a very successful day. It was kind of overwhelming, wasn't it, Kyla? Uh, there were so many people there and we got to talk to a lot of folks there. So it's a really, uh, it's a great experience for these ambassadors too, to be able to answer questions about, you know, well, why should I care uh, about soy ink or about soy in my chocolate bars or soy in all kinds of different things like that. So really we, um, we are also on Twitter and we have um, at GrowNextGen and that Twitter feed oftentimes is advertising where we're going to be, where you can find us in the ambassador program as well. So um, this outreach has been very, very successful. And we, yeah, if, if you're at an ag related event, generally you'll find us there. Kyla, we get to talk to you a little bit. Uh, you are the lead ambassador for Grow Next Gen. Um, how did you learn about the ambassador program and what made you want to get involved? Um, so I learned about it through my college. Some mutual friends were a part of it and my professors kind of said, hey, this is a really good opportunity for people going into the agriculture education field and just to like get experience more than just student teaching and stuff like that. So that's kind of about um, how I got connected and how I learned about it. And I've been with it for two years now and I still love it every day. So what are some of the things that you enjoy about the ambassador program and about being an ambassador? I really like um, seeing those people making those connections and talking to the consumers about how vast like the agriculture industry is, whether it's the tires that you're driving your car with or um, baking cookies with vegetable oil, like soybeans are in everything that we use and do around every part of our, our lives. So just like seeing them make that connection and getting them more knowledgeable about agriculture. Kyla, can you talk to me a little bit about some of the benefits that you'll take away from this uh, experience into then maybe your next step in your career or your next uh, like step in your education process as well? Yeah, so this um, experience has definitely given me uh, a lot of experience with doing formal and informal lessons and delivering to people who may not know what I'm talking about and try to take a step back. Like I know what I'm talking about, but I need to take a step back and sit and kind of simplify it so I can talk to people who may not know or have the same background as I do. And so that they can understand or have a better understanding of what we're talking about. You said this is uh, your second year as an ambassador? Yes. What are, uh, over the last two years, um, what are some of the are there any particular stories or experience or um, interactions that you've had over the last couple of years? Um, I really liked the state fair and that was a really good time to like talk about people who may not be as close to the agriculture industry and just like having those like kind of strange conversations like yes this is what agriculture is and we are working towards like the helping the environment and producing enough food for everyone and stuff like that. We did a um, soybean or not st strawberry DNA experiment there. And it was really cool to see, like explain why we're looking for those DNAs and different things like that. And like go into the GMO discussion and just trying to educate people that way. Tom, you've seen the ambassador program grow and develop um, for more than a decade. As you look at where it started and, and where it is now, what are some of the things maybe that you take away in your role as director of research and education and, and how successful the Grow Next Gen program has been? Well, the ambassador program has been a very successful part of Grow Next Gen. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And uh, as we've kind of alluded to, it was kind of informal when it started, but educationprojects.org has done a really good job of 
finding students from various colleges in Ohio who are interested in agriculture education and communications uh, to be our ambassadors. And they go through, the ambassadors go through, we usually have anywhere around a dozen. Uh, they stay busiest between May and September because that's when there are a lot of activities going on around the state. Um, Education Project does a great job of uh, training them and giving them the information and the techniques they need to deal with the public and uh, with teachers and students. I mean, the ambassadors go to a wide variety of events, uh, not only the State Fair and Farm Science Review, big events like that and the COSI Festival that was mentioned, but they go to after school programs, they go to community events, and it's all about getting the word out about soybeans and agriculture. So it's been very successful. I think last year, it's absolutely incredible. They, re our ambassadors last year reached over 31,000 people in person. That Pretty amazing. When we started, we were probably lucky to get 5,000. I'm not sure they'll reach 31,000 every year, but we hope it's 20,000 or more and getting the word out. It's just worked really well. And it it uh, gets the word out about our industry, but it also gets the word out about Grow Next Gen. And hopefully more and more people become familiar with Grow Next Gen and how it can help in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Jane, when you look at this ambassador program with Grow Next Gen, how does this prepare these students for a, a career in a classroom and an education down the road? Uh, I, I think that's a great uh, observation because it definitely does. They, um, as Tom said, they go to a lot of different places. So we've had ambassadors in teacher classrooms to, as guest speakers. We've had them at career fairs where they're talking about careers in agriculture and answering student questions. And we've had them at these big events where really it's a walk up and students either stand in line to make soy ink or soy chapstick lip balm. Um, so the, the students are really getting a great experience at crowd management. You know, they have to lay out their table so that things are in the right order and that there's not a backup at one spot versus another. Either they're moving kids through the line or they're, you know, there are multiple places where kids can walk up. They're having to give direction multiple times, uh, like, I don't know, thousands of times in some cases um, as they're making, you know, these different, uh, uh, you know, whether it's soy ink or soy lip balm, where kids are actually measuring. So they're actually using science skills. They're actually measuring out a specific amount of oil or water or the Kool-Aid itself. Um, so there's a lot that's going on and they are having to pay attention to all of it. And as a retired teacher, I know that that's the way your classroom works. Whenever you're doing an experiment or an activity, it looks like chaos, but you know what's going on and you've got it under control. And I feel like that's one of the biggest uh, assets that these students walk away with, as well as the confidence. You know, I think when I started teaching, I didn't have this kind of an experience and the confidence level that you need to be in a classroom as a new teacher has to be bigger than what I started out with, especially with students these days. You know, I think our student population has changed a lot. So it's really great for them to be able to say when a kid says, I don't know what this has to do with anything. And they're able to answer that here's the connection for you. And this is why it's relevant for you to do this activity. So I feel like that confidence of being able to do that in a informal kind of chaotic experience is a really good is a really good bonus. I'll throw this out to whoever wants to answer. Thinking about, we know that that the ag sector is a very small percentage of the population. Thinking about continuing to spark an interest in ag fields for non-traditional ag students, is this also kind of a gateway into 
Like, look at the cool things that we do in the ag sector to maybe spark an interest in a kid who comes from an urban background or doesn't come from a farm, but maybe has an interest in engineering or building type things at a young age to, to kind of open the door, per se. I think... There's no doubt. That's one thing we want to do. We want to make that connection. Uh, I'll let Kyla answer that too, because she's the one who's out there talking to these folks. But uh, if we have an opportunity to get urban, suburban uh, students interested in careers, as you know, Megan, all along the, the ch chain in agriculture, there are so many different opportunities to participate uh, that I don't think students realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have um, a lot of activities that we do are mostly science-based, but we also have um, a couple technology-based and like engineering-based ones. Um, we talk a lot about drones in agriculture and how like that technology with the drones is used to whether it be so, like looking at your field, spraying, finding your animals if they're way out in the back pasture, um, do, using drones in a positive way to um, use them to help with your fields and stuff like that. And we also have um, our soil compaction experiment, which shows kind of an engineering kind of technology about how we need, uh, look at the soil compaction rates in tractors in our fields to see how we can engineer them to have like a less compaction rate so that we can keep using the soil and keep the soil healthy so that we can keep growing the best, whether it's corn, soybeans, stuff like that, that we want to get out of it. Yeah, and I, I would just add on to those uh, different activities. We have some that are around plant science as well. We have some around water quality. We have, um, and so all of the ambassadors go through a training that includes all of these different types of activities that they can choose from based on the event and what a teacher might want in their classroom if they're requesting an ambassador to come. So I think that, you know, we're always looking for new ways to make the career relevant kinds of activities. And you can then talk about that career, you know, as Kyla mentioned that engineering, you know, agriculture engineering is a huge area and computer science, the programming that goes into some of the precision agriculture, you know, pieces that we have, students are unaware. And so when you watch these robots that are programmed to just go back and forth over some soil in a bin, you can talk to them about, and we had to program this robot to do that. And so we're not only looking at the engineering of the tracks and the tread and the, the soil compaction itself, but how did we get that thing to just keep on going? Um, so I think that, you know, those kinds of opportunities where you're talking about all the connections, when you're really talking about agriculture, but you're talking about computer science, you're talking about plant health and why soil compaction matters and soil health and water quality, all of those pieces, there are so many jobs related to all of those areas. And I think it really gives us a great opportunity to have those types of conversations. A lot of times with people who would never, even parents who would never have thought that my child might get a great job in agriculture. So, or in an ag related career. So I think that those, these activities are kind of a, a tricky way to get us into those kind of conversations. What a gateway to have, huh? You're right. <laughs> Tom, as we wrap up today, why does the Ohio Swimming Council see this as a continued important investment um, for Ohio soybean farmers and Ohio soybean industry? Uh, that's a great question, Megan. Um, they've provided lots of support over the years for Grow Next Gen and our education programs. And I think the reason is that so few people, one of the reasons is so few people really have any connection to the farm or to food production or all the things that can be produced from 
food to industrial products with agri with soybeans and, and as an example. Um, Grow Next Gen is a great way to get information out there about our industry and make sure that people understand the importance of it, uh, the wide breadth of what's involved from planting the seed to uh, harvesting it, to processing it, to moving it overseas and international trade. I mean, there's just so much involved. And uh, the more we can get the information out there, uh, the better off uh, we'll all be, and it'll be good for our industry as a whole. So I think they're taking a very broad view and uh, are pleased with the progress that has been made and we continue to improve and reach more people every year. And uh, it's just been a great program and our board and hopefully other soybean farmers see it as uh, a good investment and a good way to get the word out about our industry. Tommy you alluded to this a little bit earlier. Can you talk about the impact of those in-person events and how much impact they have opposed to some of the other education and outreach offerings that Ohio Soybean Council has as well? Well, it, you know, Megan, it's very expensive to do consumer marketing and advertising and PR and that sort of thing. What better way to get the word out to thousands of people than to get uh, passionate young college students who enjoy talking uh, to people of all ages uh, about soybeans and our industry. So, uh, you know, I think I think it's been very valuable. And if you can reach 31,000 people in four or five months in person with 12 people out there, I, I think you're, you're getting a pretty good return on an investment. Well, I'm going to give you the last word today. Um, as you talk to folks who might be interested or have kids who might be interested in getting involved, involved in the ambassador program, uh, what's your pitch? What do you want them to take away from the experience that you and other students like yourself have had uh, really over the last decade? I would say reach out. If you see that we're going to be at an event, come up and talk to us, even if it's to ask about your day. Like we want to talk to you so that we can get you connected and get you into this amazing program. So just, uh, I would say reach out. And if we're not in an event you near you, um, gurnextgen.org is a great way to also get connected with our website and familiarize yourself a little bit with, that, with it that way. Jane, Tom, Kyla, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. I'm Megan Grebner with Voice of Soy TV, a content partnership with the Ohio Soybean Council on Grand Have a great day.